for tuning, tuning in again. If you would please put your palms together for a meditation reading. The teachings of the Buddha help us to understand the oneness of all life, to lead us in the right direction. The Buddha provided us with the Eightfold Path. If you would please join me in Gashu. Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas. There's a beehive in my roof. And you know that adage, busy as a bee, well, they are. They are very busy. And I call an exterminator. And this person came out, but I asked him if they could just, just get rid of them, but don't kill them. Because bees are scarce now. But bees are very vital to our lives. Some, of course, provide honey, royal jelly, and of course, pollination. They move their pollen from one plant to another, pollinating that plant. They help in fertilization and they help in the production of seeds for later in the future. And amazing, bees have different roles in their hives. Some are nurses that take care of the other bees. There are janitor bees who clean the hive. And of course, there are those who are foragers. They go out and seek food and pollen to feed the other bees. And yes, at times, if provoked, they can steam. Anyway, so this exterminator knew how the bee population has been declining. So this person used a very simple method. Dawn soap and water. And he sprayed the bees that were flying outside the hive so that they would carry the residue, the residue of the soap and water into the hive and spread it around. And he was hoping that they would eventually leave. He's, he's, the, the exterminator did it several times, but it didn't work. They must like my house. So every morning, I just watched them doing their job. You know, and if you think about it, we don't want to harm any living thing. And when we are trying to rid of the insects, we have to consider, consider the use of chemicals and its effect on, on the environment, on our furry family friends, and on the population that is getting more and more scarce. And our teachings, our Buddhist teachings say not to harm, maim, or kill any living thing. But you know, sometimes that is difficult, very difficult. But being mindful, being mindful of, of their 
behavior, B's behavior, let's say. You know, we don't have to, we can just be aware of what they do for us. And not to be stung is don't bother them, don't disturb them, don't harass them. And, and then we're out of harm's way. That's all to it. Don't harass them. But there are so many choices to make about, about if we want to get rid of a beehive or if we want to destroy those bees. But it's a decision we have to be very, very mindful of, knowing that bees play a very large, vital part in our lives. And that's where I think Nambutsu comes in, no Muami Dabutsu, because it helps to clear the mind and it helps, to, it helps me to focus on seeing what's the best way. And, and you know, it, and it takes our full effort um, and understanding and views and it takes thought and it takes our conduct and it takes our, our energy and our, and our concentration and mindfulness and, and yes, even our meditation, to think about harming not only bees, but harming each other, harming those that are weaker than ourselves. We have to think beyond that. We have to truly look at following the Eightfold Path. But you know what? We can still live in harmony with bees and with each other by listening, hearing, and understanding the Eightfold Path. So look forward to a more, more in-depth study of what I refer to, that we refer to as the Eightfold Path. So if you would please join me in Gasho. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Namo Amidabas. Thank you. Hope to see you again.